YouTube has an incredibly smart algorithm, at least smart enough to make the company a lot of money. More eyeballs on a video and more engagement equals more cash. It's simple. But what is not simple is how potent this combination has become. Videos from fringe groups with extreme ideas surfacing to the top and influencing users' views. The pandemic has pushed the issue to new levels, with false information about the coronavirus often finding a much larger audience than trusted sources. As the months have gone on, YouTube has become inundated with documentary-style films from pseudoscientists promoting conspiracy theories. This pandemic documentary received millions of views. Despite efforts to remove it from YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, users were constantly re-uploading the clip. And in recent weeks, demonstrators have taken to the streets in London to promote some of the most popular coronavirus conspiracy theories, mainly seen online. A man who would like to remain anonymous got in touch with us after his mum decided to go along. Mum had two posters. One read, arrest Bill Gates for crimes against humanity. The other had a QAnon hashtag, save the children. She was first taken in by coronavirus conspiracy theories on YouTube, and now she's been radicalised by QAnon on there too. It's so hard to have a normal conversation. QAnon is a conspiracy theory that suggests President Trump is waging a secret war against satanic paedophiles in government, media and business. Since the last US election, the social media giants have had a bit of a reckoning. They are all trying to clean up their act to stave off heavy-handed regulation. Facebook with its oversight board, Twitter with more robust warning labels, and now YouTube says it's added a new tool to its arsenal to combat misinformation. It partnered up with fact-checking sites to warn users if the phrase they are searching has been refuted and pointing them to information by a trusted source. Uh, put simply, uh, it's a tool where when users go to search for a particular topic on YouTube, uh, if there happens to be a fact check, these fact checks are generated by third party publishers, uh, that will trigger in uh, the results of that particular query right at the top of the query and it will link out to that fact check saying whether that particular claim is false. Uh, oftentimes fact checking publishers have a rating of that type of claim that will be displayed as well. This is one of the many tools YouTube says it uses to reduce misinformation on the site. But none of these measures seems to be proactive and doing nearly enough to reduce exposure to misleading information. Uh, the challenge about misinformation, as you know, uh, on a platform like ours, which is an open platform, we really do value the fact that it's an open platform, uh, where, that, where there's a diversity of voices, uh, is that with the changing nature of information around this pandemic, what is the new type of misinformation that might pop up um, uh, before there was the conspiracy around 5G and COVID, who would have guessed that those two, you know, kind of randomly uh, separate pieces of techn uh, technology and science would be linked together? Well, that happened in the course of the pandemic. So we had to adjust very, very quickly to change our enforcement guidelines. You say that these conspiracy theories are new and evolving, but a number of the ones that are still being promoted on your platform have been around for months, especially in foreign languages, that includes in Russian and in Hindi, of false conspiracy theories about the origin of coronavirus or even doubting its existence. Uh, for content that might not uh, clearly uh, cross the lines of our policies, we uh, reduce that content in our recommendations. Uh, it, so if it's borderline content in nature, because as I said, misinformation can be murky, but we still want to reduce the exposure to it. YouTube says it's removed millions of videos containing misinformation from the platform, in many instances before anyone has viewed them at all. But there have been numerous examples of videos promoting false claims and conspiracy theories about coronavirus, especially in foreign languages, and those have stayed online for months, accumulating hundreds of thousands of views. The Mozilla Foundation behind the Firefox browser has decided to act. This week it's released a new extension for both Chrome and Firefox called Regrets Reporter. The idea is the user can report any recommended content that they found unsavoury. Mozilla says this helps crowdsource research into YouTube's recommendation problem, and it hopes it can force YouTube to become more transparent about how its algorithm works. I think that YouTube's algorithm is really one of the most uh, opaque ones out of all of the, the platforms out there, which is why they have a lot more work to do. So YouTube um, has come out with a lot of statistics, like saying that they have increased uh, introduced policy changes that have worked to inc uh, decrease recommendations of borderline content by upwards of 70%. But the problem is that 
there's really no way to verify whether or not this is the case without involving the public, without involving you know, uh, researchers, sociologists, people who have knowledge that goes beyond just the boardrooms of Silicon Valley, that together we're better able to solve this problem of, you know, misinformation surfacing in recommendations.